Karuna Therapeutics is up nearly 400 percent this week alone. The company had strong results from a clinical study of its experimental schizophrenia drug. And here with more on that is Meg Terrell. Meg? Hey guys, so schizophrenia is estimated to affect more than a million Americans. It is less than 1% of the U.S. population, but it's heavily burdensome. The disease is one of the 15 leading causes of disability worldwide, according to the National Institute of Mental Health. And the market for schizophrenia drugs is large. According to Cowan Research, it represents about half the total $11 billion market for antipsychotic drugs. Still, it needs better options. Many available now come with side effects that can make them hard to take. Karuna's data on its drug called CAR-XT took the market by surprise this week, offering what City called a potential game-changing therapy, a new way to treat schizophrenia that appears to be effective and safe. But the drug still needs to go through the next phase of clinical trials to prove that out, which the company said it aims to start, guys, by the end of next year. All right, Meg, stick around. I'm here now for a Power Lunch exclusive is Dr. Steve Paul, the chairman, president, and CEO of Karuna Therapeutics. Uh, Dr. Paul, great to have you on. <clears throat> great to be here, Meg. Thanks for having us on. Actually, it's Melissa right now, but Meg's oh, here sitting Melissa. next to me. Um, I, I will start the interview off for now, uh, Dr. Paul. Okay. And, and, and my first question is, you, Meg had made clear that there has to be another round of, of trials in order to actually prove this drug uh, works effectively, et cetera. But analysts are already calling this a blockbuster drug. Analysts are already predicting profitability by 2023. Are they on the right track? Well, let me just say uh, our results that we announced this past Monday the results of a phase two study, fairly large phase two, two study, were really quite exciting, quite encouraging. We saw really nice uh, beneficial effects of this drug over the five-week trial, beginning at week two, and then significant uh, statistical significance uh, all through the trial. Uh, very nice effect in terms of the magnitude of the antipsychotic effect. And again, without the troubling side effects of the current standards of care, no weight gain, no sedation, none of the motor movement problems, we call them extrapyramidal side effects that uh, occur with the current standards of care. So we're pretty excited by the results. Uh, now we have obviously more work to do. We have to bring this compound through phase three in order to get it uh, to patients. Dr. Paul, it's Meg this time. Uh, I wanted to ask hey, you Meg. about the, the study design, because in the phase two, you actually checked all of these 182 patients into the hospital for those five weeks, right, and took them off their currently prescribed drugs and then um, had them on the trial. So how would that potentially work in a larger trial? Could you replicate that in phase three, or would the FDA want to see more potential real-world type settings um, testing this in a larger setting? Oh, absolutely. So the phase two design really is going to be... Uh, Pretty much what we do in phase three, we'll probably enroll a larger number of patients. Uh, traditionally, these studies initially are done as inpatients. These patients are taken off their meds. Uh, they can become quite sick during the course of the trial, and that's why they're treated as inpatients, to be very careful with them. Uh, we will uh, attempt to replicate this. We're cautiously optimistic, given the robustness of the clinical data that we reported this past Monday. Uh, we will need some longer-term open-label extension safety data, undoubtedly, but we need to meet with the FDA at what we call an end of phase two meeting, which will happen uh, sometime early next year, maybe second quarter next year, and really map out the path to get this new medicine uh, to patients.